So, hello everyone. Uh, Tulio already said it. Uh, my name is Elian Blumer, and I'm working at the APFL Library in Research Data Management. Before I really head off to this virtual tour through research data management, I would like to acknowledge a few people. So thank you to Eilis for having me here. And then thank you to the team and other colleagues from the EPFL library, because without them, what we're doing is a lot of teamwork. And without them, I could not even present what I'm going to present. I'm coordinator, but also team member. So I really, it is important to me to acknowledge them and to thank them. That's what I'm going to talk about. It will always take a little bit time to go through the slides or that they are ready for you. A little bit of history of research data management at TPFL Library and the team, then the typical day, then a little bit of outlook and floors for the questions. This is already the first slide that should be now on your side ready as well. And that covers um, the history of research data management at EPFL. To be honest, um, it was even before my time. So research data management is part of EPFL library since quite some time, since 2012, first reflections have started. So it started early. And uh, it's also something that was developed because of internal and external drivers. So EPFL internal and EPFL external drivers. So you can, for instance, see that there was the open research data pilot that was launched by the H2020 funders. So people were asking to reflect more on data management. And this certainly helped us for our talk and for our EPFL service around research data management. Then there were also internal developments like we had first recruitments that were only for research data management going on. And now when we are looking back, this really is important that you have dedicated people for research data management. And also the Swiss wide project data lifecycle management was a driver for what was happening in this service of research data management at the EPFL. You should now see continuing from 2017. What is important for research data management services that you uh, continue to improve and adapt it. So you, it does not look like it was looking in 2012. It really adapted also to the needs and so on. And also to internal priorities. EPFL internal priorities. So for instance, at uh, 2017, there was a new pro, um, president at EPFL, Martin Vetterli, and he was far more open science oriented and open data oriented. And this helped us to adapt our service and also to communicate quite a lot about it. And this is also very important for such a service. Maybe you're asking yourself where this service in a scientific library is situated. So I have taken the organigram of the library, of the EPFL library, and you can see that research data management is part of one of the big three departments. So the services for education and research called search, but it's part of this, but we're collaborating a lot with CADO, which is the resources and development delivery service. And you can see that I highlighted the metadata um, team and the collection management and access tools. And these are mainly our most important collaborations internally. But research data management is part of the services. Uh, before I can talk about our team, I will talk a little bit about our values. So we are in a very fast evolving context and higher education institutions. So it's very important that also we in the library as RDM team, we keep the pace as good as possible. And that's what we are trying by adapting our offer as often as possible. And we also try to have a research focused approach 
this means more or less, I will show you how we do it, but this means that we are asking what researchers need so that we can adapt our offer directly to what they are telling us. Uh, we are a technical university, so this means that we are more oriented for the technical disciplines, but still among them, there are many, many different disciplines and they all have different needs. So in research data management, for us, that means more or less that every question um, gets uh, one answer. And this is what we're trying to do whenever possible and coming also up with these disciplinary specificities. And then our main users are the researchers. So we also have this uh, research focused approach. That's probably most interesting. People always want to know who is working together and who is actually working in this team. So you should see now the team of the research data management team. Um, the next uh, slide would have been about collaborations. So I told you a little bit about the teams, the team, and um, uh, we could not work on EPFL campus without collaborations. And it's quite difficult because all the collaborations are scattered on a campus. So we have the research office that is working in some parts of research data management. We have um, then the technical transfer office. We have the EPFL data champions that work with us. And all every part of a question from a researcher, every part of the work of a researcher, like for instance, the documentation, of their research um, asks for another service that will help. So it is very important that we collaborate as closely as possible, but we also notice that it's quite difficult because uh, for researchers it's not logic at all at which moment one has to contact this service and as, at which moment someone has to contact another service. So this is something that really needs to be improved. And it's also something that is a challenge in other RDM services in libraries. So I've chosen a typical but fictive day. It's the 29th of April. And we will start at 9 and end later on. And I've chosen different projects. And they will highlight quite nicely what we are doing and how heterogeneous our work is in the team. Uh, in general, one up to three of the team is working on one project. And so when I say we afterwards, this always includes different people. So it can be either Alain, it can be Antoine, or it can be Francesco, or it can be three people together. Just that you know that this is various and we choose um, corresponding to what we can do best. So let's start. Nine o'clock in the morning. So we will start with the Research Data Management Weekly or the FIDOR. Um, the RDM Weekly is our weekly meeting. We, we generally do it in the Rolex Learning Center and we have our post-its on the window but in these circumstances, we had to move online. So we have a Trello. And during this meeting, we try to come up with different topics that are most important to discuss among our five. Sometimes we also have mails in our common research data at epfl.ch mailbox that we need to answer or we need some other input. So we coordinate during this weekly meeting or we have to change something on our RDM web pages, this is possible as well. If we don't have anything to organize, this weekly meeting transforms into a so-called FIDOR. That's Formation Interne des Données de Recherche. And this is a place where all of us can come up with topics, like an internal coffee lecture, and where we can discuss, like for instance, City has been on a conference and she would like to inform us about what she has learned there and why it is interesting for all of us. So this is how we get started in the day and how we know where we have to go 
during the day. Uh, let's move on. Super. So the next meeting is uh, the Data Repository Tech Meeting. Um, it's the meeting of our tech group around our data repository. This also implies the information we are working on a data repository. And we have done a call for tender for a data publication and preservation solution. And this is currently closing. And the data preservation solution tender was successful. So now we have to come up with a more in-depth uh, analysis with researchers, with a pilot. And this takes a lot of preparation. And this means that we have to do submission agreements, ingest processes, application profiles, the project planning, and so on. And we need really this team meeting once a week to come up with solutions and to come up with these documents. And this, for instance, is typically a collaboration uh, between the two departments I was showing before, the CADO and the search. So it is an overarching project in the library. And another meeting. Maybe in the meantime, we will do a break. And then we will head on to the meeting of NCCR Robotics. So the NCCR Robotics is um, NCCRs are National Competence Centers of Research. So these are conglomerates of several universities and they try to tackle a specific research discipline together during always groups of four years. And robotics is working about robotics. And what we have done in 2019 the NCCR Robotics that is uh, headed by the EPFL has approached us, the library, and has asked for an embedded data manager for coming up with a research data management strategy. For those of you who know what a data management plan is, um, this is just an even more elaborated strategy document for all the different labs in this NCCR. For those who don't know what a data management plan is, a data management plan is a document that you have to provide to the Swiss National Science Fund to get money for and where you have to reflect how we are going to handle your data. So imagine this NCCR strategy for 29 labs is even more than just one document for one project of one lab. And one of our colleagues during five months, he actually went to this NCCR Robotics, and he came up via a survey among these labs with a dedicated strategy that fitted the needs for this NCCR. And during this meeting, now to come back, uh, this meeting, we will discuss with the newly hired data manager of this NCCR, how to implement this strategy. So what does that mean for each and every lab and for each and every head of this lab to have such a strategy? And how does he or she has to change the habits in the lab regarding data management? Another support meeting example. So I named it support meeting electronic laboratory notebooks. Maybe I can first a little bit introduce what an electronic laboratory notebook is. So this is a tool that a researcher would use during active data management for documenting his data, documenting maybe the protocols he was using for his or her research, and for some sort of a records management tool during the data treatment. During uh, this support meeting, uh, we, we had a researcher that approached us and he was working in physics and he taught us that he is looking for help on his typical transmission electron microscopy workflow. So he wanted to know, he showed us all his data treatments, he showed us his notebooks, he showed us his code. And he wanted to know whether there is a tool 
that exist that can help him out on his questions and that could automate all of it. So, yeah. Um, and this is for now also on audio, it's quite difficult. But imagine you get this question and you're not necessarily from physics. So you go and reunite several people in the team and this would typically be one of those questions for our team meeting. And that's what we discussed there. And in the end, the, the idea is that we come up with a list of tools that work for exactly these needs that the researcher has. So it's a really one-to-one -one, uh, support meeting that we have. I have brought another example of support meeting. This is a support meeting about data publication. And this is a complete other question. As you can see, it's not about active data management. It's really about the end of a research project where a researcher is asked to publish his data on a so-called repository, just as we do with our articles. And he is coming to see us and explains us exactly what data he has. He gives us the volume, the different structures of the data, what is in there and the different categories of the data that is in there. And then he asks us about, okay, what place could you suggest me to upload the data? And we don't have any data repository so far at EPFL, so we generally suggest Zenodo. And in this specific case, for instance, we, we let the researcher via distance, because this was already in home office, we explained him how to upload a data set on Zenodo and how to choose the corresponding license he or she wanted or was best fitting for the data he had. Um, maybe two, three words about our support in general. So um, here's just a quick overlook. It really, our support can cover all the stages of a research project, of a researcher from the beginning from the up to the documentation up to the licensing and so on and uh, it does not only include the in-person support but also tools such as a cost calculator where people can estimate how much cost uh, data management will be in their specific context it uh, contains fast guides these are hands out like one pager hands out and it's also it contains also templates that we adapt to the different uh, funders that are asking for data management plans those documents that you have to provide around your data management i brought with me some numbers should be charging okay so this is just a quick look. We're quite stable in DMPs. So we review quite a few DMPs in a year. Reviewing can go up to the third round of review. And it's also it's always with different people so that you have several eyes that look at this document. And what we also notice is that expertise in research data management is more and more important. And in expertise, we put up all questions, like questions, what do I do with GitHub data? What can I do with my electronic laboratory notebook that is not linked to Zenodo? This can very much vary. I will move on. It's in the afternoon, mid-afternoon, and uh, we will talk about trainings. We have about 14 to 17 trainings a year in research data management at the EPFL library. And this uh, meeting would have been here to show you how we uh, organize those trainings. So we would take one hour and we would discuss first of all the training objectives. In this case, it is a data management plan finalizing training. And we would 
also try to find good and bad examples that we can show during the training. Maybe we already have super. Maybe we already have uh, good examples coming from the participants, because the idea is that they provide us with this document, and that we can take out. Yeah, this you did really nice, and this you need to improve a little bit. And then I also added another example that we found somewhere else, and that is a good example to highlight how important it is to really think about data management in advance to not come up with eight terabyte of data that you can't use. So this is the meeting where we discuss all these different things around the training, a specific one. And that's the slide that shows our trainings in general. Like we, they, they also vary, they can go more into DMP. This was my example, but they can also be a workshop for the EPFL staff or for specific postdocs that are at EPFL. Then we have trainings that are more code and data oriented. We have the software carpentries for two days that we do, and we are preparing a credited course, research data management in chemistry. And there are also many others. You can find them on the website of the library in the RDM part. And you see what I already said before about the numbers and also the participants in the two last years. We are still collecting this year. It changes a little bit because all of the trainings are moved online. Yeah. And now this should be the last. We should have gone through a day. It took us not a day, but it took us quite some day and some time. Can you already see the informal, the data champions meeting? And this highlights very well one of our initiatives. So since last year, we have a so-called data champions community. It's a community of 34 researchers currently. It's changing uh, rather quickly. And we, during this meetup, we, we meet regularly. We try to meet three times a year, let's say in a more formal way. And then we have informal meetups where we would drink and eat and where uh, these researchers can also exchange on data management with us and among themselves. They are um, thought to have to advise other researchers on data handling and to be a little bit the spokesperson of the faculty. And the idea is also to, to help us reach out to the scientific community about research data management. And these data champions help us quite a lot. And to promote then our events and trainings or to promote the, the RDM tools. Yeah, that's pretty much the day. I think it would be better if I jump to the outlook and that we, we can discuss a little bit more because probably it's easier to discuss than that I show you the slides to the coming soon. Yeah. So um, what I jumped is the part that I promised you about how we know how to improve. We do a lot of service. We do service in collaboration with Theo Delft and other colleagues. So we did one in, in 2017 and 2019. So you can take a look at the results and the slides afterwards. I think they will be shared. And we also do reviews of our services that we provide. So at the end of every year, all the participants or all the people we met, we asked them, how did you find our service? and via this way we can improve. And coming soon, yeah, we, we want to have a good solution to ensure the archiving and the long-term preservation of the EPFL data. Uh, we really would like to intensify our work on those electronic laboratory notebooks. For this, we are also participating in the EasyFair project around it's a Swiss university's P5 project around the tool Renku. 
maybe you have heard of it. And we would like to increase our training that is disciplinary and to really go into this expert branch that you could see on the diagram. And yeah, to continue to foster code dissemination and reuse as part of data management, we think it's important, and to continue work on incentives for doing so. So this is really our outlook. Yeah. And do you have any questions? Can you see the question slide? <laughs> That's super. So if you want to take to, to look videos uh, afterwards from the Love Data Week, feel free. We produced five horror stories this year. And uh, sorry for the problems with the slides. But if you have questions or would like to have details about certain projects somewhere where I wasn't clear, don't hesitate.